Hello and welcome to From the Depths. One of the most complex games of a series of vehicle construction games, From the Depths is a game that can take several hours of dedicated learning to fully understand. A task that may seem intimidating to some. That's where people like myself come in. Come on, let's take a more in-depth look. All hands to briefing. This is Admiral Y11. Sorry I haven't been around. I've had some difficulties recording regular footage, besides the occasional live stream I'd do. But now, I've got plenty of opportunities to record, and I thought the best way to come back was with something I've wanted to do for a while. A From the Depths tutorial series. Let's take a walk. Now, I thoroughly enjoy this game. It's one of the only indie games I have, where I've put over 650 hours into it. I've even bought several friends copies of the game. However, it's always seemed like those I bought it for never fully understood the game's mechanics. And I aim to at least try to help with that issue with this series. Let's go up top. Turn on the HUD while I'm at it. So. I assume those who are watching this have familiarized themselves with the game's controls. If you haven't, I'd recommend familiarizing yourself with them. You can go into Options and Player Controls and it will show you everything you need here. There's also an in-game tutorial, which you can do, and will give you free experience for doing them. Well, it's technically not free since you're spending time, but that's a whole different other conversation. The point is, Familiarize yourself with how to actually play the game first before we can get into how to play the game's game, so to speak. Now, we're going to start with the basics. The game's blocks, the block types, their functions, and what the stats of these blocks mean. You can't build a boat if you don't know what you're making it out of. So, let's start with the block types. There are, in total, 29 different block types in this game with 11 different material types but first let's go over the block types so the first base block we have is the regular block it's a one by one by one meter block this is your standard block nothing special about it it's just here just your one just your average size one block we've got our two meter beam which is basically just two of these, but it's one block. We've got our three meter beam, which is basically three of the regular blocks, but it's all one block. And we got our four meter beam, which is the same thing as the two and three, where it's four of these blocks. Now the purpose of having the four meter beam, the three meter beam, and the two meter beam is because you don't want to make your ship entirely out of one meter blocks. For some reason, well, there is an obvious reason, there's more objects to render when you have it entirely built out of one blocks, but building a ship using 4 meter blocks is not only easier and faster to build ships with, but it also is easier on your computer. Now, this used to be a much larger problem when the game was running on Unity 4. However, since it's upgraded from Unity 4 to Unity 5, we don't have as much of an issue. However, it's still good to build your ships out of larger blocks if you can. So, each kind of block, for 1, 2, 3, and 4 meter, has their respective slopes. We have the down slopes, going from 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, and 4 meter. We have the right and left square corners, also 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, and 4 meter. We have our triangle corners, from 1 meter to 4 meter. We have the inverted triangle corners, which are also 1 to 4 meters. And we have our wedges, which are 1 to 4 meters. We also have this block, the 4 meter long, 1 meter down slope. Essentially what it is, is it's the 1 meter downward slope, but as one block. Once again, it's to help prevent lag. This is the only slope that is 4 meters. There is no 4 meter, 2 meter downward slope, or the, you, you won't find this block. This block does not exist as one block. However, I do think they should. These are all the block types. 
for each block with the acceptance with the uh acceptance would that be the word exception with the exception of certain kinds of blocks we're going to go over that now with the block types so as i said before there are 11 block types it may look like there's 10 but this is actually a block here first off wood it floats well it doesn't protect against much though so if you want to build a armored combat ship out of wood, you gotta you gotta put a lot of wood in order to make it any you know in order to have any effect against say armor piercing. High explosive does very well against this. Stone bricks, they're heavy, and they're cheaper than lead. They're mostly used for either structures as a you know decoration, or they can be used as ballast in the place of lead. Now metal. This is the most common block you'll use on armored combat ships. Or anything, you know, built for combat, that is. It's mid-range, meaning it's in the middle of all the blocks. It's not as heavy as some of the other heavy armor. However, it doesn't float. And it's stronger than wood. It's, in, it's the middleman of all the blocks in this game. You're mostly going to be using it is the point I'm making. Light alloy. It's lighter and it's stronger than wood. It floats as well. However, it is slightly more expensive than wood. It's in between, in the price range, it's in between metal and wood for building armored things. You're most likely going to use this on flying craft or airships. Since it's lighter, it makes it easier to build flying vehicles using it. Glass. It's glass. You can see through it. However, bullets can also see you through it, and they will go through it at you. So don't be building a glass cannon. Lead. Lead is heavy. However, like real life, it is also soft. This will not be used for armor of any kind. It is strictly for ballast. Heavy armor. Heavy armor is the strongest armor in this game. However, it is weak to EMP. It will take EMP damage, so be wary of that. It is also incredibly heavy and incredibly expensive. ERA armor, also known as Explosive Reactive Armor. It's used to protect against fragmentation and heat or high explosive anti-tank shells. However, it is one use and it's pretty expensive. I generally don't use this. It looks nice though and it can be used as sandbags. Light blocks. This block here, it is in fact a block. You can tell by the sort of uh, distortion it leaves behind. Now the light block is weird. The light block when put on a turret or a spinner will phase through other matter. So it's useful if you're building a flying machine and you want the, the uh, spin block or the turret protected by armor but you want whatever's at the end of it on the outside. It also means that regular Ordnance will just go straight through it. However, it is weak against high explosive weapons, and it will detonate if faced with high explosives, so be careful of that. Rubber. Rubber has no armor value, however, it does not take any damage from terrain and collision. It's very good for making, say, motherships or landing craft. Now, the final block type is Surge Protector. The Surge Protectors are built as an anti-EMP means, countermeasure. It protects against EMP pulses. It will absorb the EMP. And that's basically it. It's also expensive. So that is all the block materials and all the block types in From the Depths. Next time we're going to go on to talk about armor thickness and how that affects your craft. We're also going to talk about how slopes are used when building your craft. Thanks for watching. I'm Admiral Y11, and tune in for another in depth look.